May our, may our thoughts be guided in the presence of God, our source, Savior, and sustainer. Amen. Please be seated. This tree is special. It's not just a Christmas tree. It is actually a chrismon tree. A chrismon is an ornament that signifies Christ. A Christ monogram, chrismon. During our 2 p.m. service this afternoon, the children gathered to place chrismons on the tree, wherever they could reach anyway. It's a little uh, mostly towards the bottom, as you can tell. And in that holy chaos of jostling each other to place their ornaments in just the right places, the children worked together to point to something greater than just us. So here we are, with symbols of Christ, before us. If you take a look up close, you'll see a variety of signs. Shepherd's crooks as a sign that Christ is the good shepherd. Crowns as a sign that Christ is our king. Candles as a sign of Christ's light. The angel in our gospel story tells the shepherd about a sign of the Messiah, an angel of the Lord appears to the shepherds in the dark of night. The shepherds were probably squinting their eyes at the sudden glory of the Lord shining around them. The angel brings a message of good news, telling the shepherds about a sign for them. The sign the angel shares is not an angel host, a star, or a glorious light shining from somewhere in Bethlehem sign that the angel tells us is to look for a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. The most important sign is not the overwhelming and blinding beauty of the glory of the Lord. It is the everyday treasure of a newborn child. The sign is not the star of Bethlehem or an angel host. The sign is that the child is wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. This is the sign of the Savior. This sign from God is hope incarnate, a baby whose very existence brings possibility to the world. Entangled in pieces of everyday life, bands of cloth and a manger. Those are the signs of our Messiah a king whose robes are bands of cloth and whose throne is a manger. Jesus was born in a manger with no room in the town of Bethlehem to even stay at the inn. Surrounded by the mess of a natural birth, baby Jesus arrived in the world in a way that was raw and real. Surrounded by animals snacking on the hay, probably, Jesus may have gotten a few wary glances from the donkeys or the cows, wondering, why has this tiny human taken over my feeding trough? Isn't there supposed to be just food in there for me? And in that humble place, with the confused animals, a mother had carefully wrapped her child in bands of cloth and laid him in the manger. Jesus was not born in a palace and placed in a golden crib. God's idea of majesty does not match human standards. God's majesty shines through everyday objects and the everyday occurrence of a baby's birth. Christ is not a lofty force beyond us that is inaccessible to humans. The sign of God's love and saving grace in the world was not a glowing, full-grown man who floated down from heaven. God chose to reveal divine love through the beautiful and fragile humanity of a baby. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors, the angel proclaims. Jesus connects heaven and earth. Humanity and divinity are both revealed in the birth of this baby. God is not distant. This story shows us that God is accessible. The glory of our God was revealed in a baby lying in a manger. We call Christ our Emmanuel, which means God with us. 
although celebrated by stars and angels, little baby Jesus reminds us that the Savior is for us. Christ is as close as our very existence. This all-encompassing celebration is not just beyond us, it's also within us. Each one of us has lived this story. All of us were once babies. Jesus brings us hope because we know Jesus. We know what it is to be human. We were all birthed by a mother and started out small and helpless, just like the little baby Jesus. We may not have had a, a bunch of animals gathered around us and been laid in a manger for in our first hours, but birth is an experience that we share with Jesus. Jesus' birth expresses solidarity and celebration with all of humanity. No matter who we are, we have at least one thing in common with Jesus, our human nature. God chose to send us a sign of saving grace and love who was just as human as he was divine. God so loved the world that God sent Jesus in both supernatural glory and human fragility to remind us that God is with us. When we celebrate Christmas, we are not celebrating a distant idea. We are celebrating a God whose glory appears in and around us. The beautiful and fragile humanity of the Savior child was wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Fabric and a feeding trough. The signs that heralded our Savior. Not material luxury and grandeur. Bands of cloth and a manger. If the cloth and wood that Mary and Joseph found to care for Jesus could be signs of divinity, then there is divine possibility brimming in the world around us. On Christmas Eve, we are on the precipice of something transformational. Items as simple as cloth and a manger can be signs of the living God. Our chrismons on the tree remind us that signs of Jesus can be found everywhere, in candles and shepherd's crooks, crowns and stars. In one of our hymns that we sang today, Angels We Have Heard on High, there is a beautiful line that goes like this. And the mountains in reply, echoing their brave delight. And then we all get to sing Gloria with 18 vowels. Because creation itself is ringing out the celebration of God's love. Although it doesn't always feel like it, God's love can shine through everyday things, through candles, mountains, and stars, or through cloth and a manger. A love so deep that no manner of pain or chaos could ever keep God from loving us through all of it. Jesus' birth was surrounded by change and chaos. Mary and Joseph made a long and strenuous journey to Bethlehem for the census, even while Mary was pregnant. On Google Maps, it says it takes about 34 hours. I don't know if that's how long it actually took them, but it was a strenuous journey. Jesus' family was rejected from the inn and ended up staying with the animals instead. Joseph was warned in dreams by the angels about where to go so that he could protect his family from the wrath of King Herod. Change and chaos reign in the world around us still. Many of us may be experiencing change and chaos in our own lives right now. But no matter how overwhelming the shadows of the world might be, they will never be able to scare God away from us or keep God's love away from us. Because divinity and humanity make the ultimate partnership. God decided to embody both of those qualities in a baby, in Jesus, the Messiah. The memory of a baby's birth rings out hope on this Christmas Eve and as we enter the Christmas season, because it is a season, not just a day, the 12 days of Christmas become not just a song, but time set apart to celebrate that God is with us 
and to share the love of God with others. With the knowledge of Christ's story to uplift us, Christmas can inspire us to not only remember a powerful story, but to live a powerful future. To allow the memory of the Christmas story to motivate us as we share love and kindness with the world. So the next time you see a swaddled up baby or a feeding trough full of hay, remember the signs of our Savior can be found all around us this Christmas Eve and always. Amen.